Welcome back, and this is the home stretch. Uh, only thing I have to do now, disassemble the console, install the chip, and hopefully all will be well in the world. I'm going to do this at a slight angle, so excuse me if I sometimes get in the way of the camera. I wish there was some sort of magic I can do to not go in front of the camera. But I regret that's simply not possible. I don't have the diagram on the PC. I will be uploading this diagram as well just so that you can see more or less what I'm doing I had to look on a chip my biggest concern is I don't know if this supports multi-region um, if it doesn't it's not the end of the world there are ways around this uh, ways that work very 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 well uh, that uh, I've been using on other consoles for a very long time but I'll show you some of those tricks if it's not multi-region or if uh, some of the games doesn't boot properly or how to play uh, secure games as well or games of corporate protection you can use the same to bypass that it's uh, very effective I must admit right. take that off. Um, I will be removing the motherboard as well on it. Uh, it's not really necessary, you can chip it with the casing, uh, but to give the camera a bit better view, it's a lot easier just to remove the motherboard at the same time. Now, the diagram that they're using has a different point for ground. I'm going to show you a better point that you can use for ground that will make your life a lot easier. once I get the motherboard out some of the points on there which will make your life hopefully a bit easier okay, now I'll just show you the points that I'm going to be using according to diagram that's 5 volts it's not too much of a problem there it's more or less where I want it to be then the diagram recommends the ground connection be connected here I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off, scrape off a bit here and then use that as ground the reason being I've got another chip here, mine is still connected to a programmer, but just to show you, if you actually put that down, you can more or less squeeze it in there and it'll sit very comfortably. Enough space to take an extra wire out to the top and it won't interfere with anything else. And the other points that the diagram recommends is actually over here. They recommend a point from this connector there. Oh, wait, this connector there to there. If you're familiar with the slimline machines under one chip, this is one of the points that they normally use as well. So basically, they recommend me to you to bridge that out. And then on top here, you want to connect to this little connection here. Let's go to pin number 6 on the IC. I'll show you that in a second once it's completed. I'll also try to find a little bit of a better view for you so that you can see as I'm working. That's welcome back. I've got a nice view for you. I'm going to remove my IC. As you can see that's it there. I just have to remove all of the extra connections now. It's quite easily done. I'm just going to touch it with the soldering iron, all of them should drop off quite easily. I don't normally recommend doing this, but I've been doing it for a while. And uh, it really honestly works. Be careful not to burn your fingers. Okay, now if all of those removed, as you can remember, I said that we need to use the top point here. So I'm going to use the one just below it. 
That's for me that makes a tiny bit more sense. And then I'm going to scrape away the bottom there, close to where the other one is. to it. So it's very difficult soldering like this because at the end of the day I need to come in from my angle and add my icing. Put a bit more solder. There we go. It's on there. Now for the top. Exact same thing, I don't know if you can see that very well there, but uh, that's how it looks. Let me take things a little light quickly. Now if you see there, there we go. It's connected to both the power and the correct IC. Now, what we need right now, what we need to do is this point here must connect to that there. So it's quite easy to do. There we go. It's a nice tight fit. And that needs to go around and over to the first one there. Just trim that off. That's the only wire with this chip which you actually need from the IC. The other one is simply a bridge, which is quite easy to apply or install. So I'm looking at the diagram quickly, two points. There we go, and then there's a capacitor. And then I'm going to take it to Okay. The wire strip out. And add the bridge. going to eat up the one side and the wire should shrink accordingly. I'm not going to strip that side, it's not needed. And there we go, that's all. Touch one, that one up just a little bit to make it look a little bit better. And um, that's it. I'll show you the end product. There. That's all you need. Well, at least according to the diagram. And uh, let's uh, close everything off and see if it's working. Uh, 
Well, sort of working. I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds. You'll see that I've just uh, put the top casing on. I don't actually want to screw it down quite yet, just in case the chip doesn't work the way I want it to. So I just put the top cover on, plugged everything back in again, set everything up. Um, I've got to connect to my computer there for video output. And uh, let's quickly give it a quick test. I've also got some test games here. I've got my original Final Fantasy VIII, but that's NTSC. No use testing that. I've got my backup. It's a backup from the PAL version. Um, in a nutshell, I used uh, the backup of a not original, and I finally bought the original a few weeks back. And I've got a PAL original game as well. So, to start off with, I'm just going to grab my PAL original copy of Medal of Honor. Uh, that's what we used to play before Call of Duty came out. It's still probably one of the best games ever. And uh, let's see if I can get both of those in for you. There we go, it's spinning. It hasn't stopped yet. And uh, PlayStation Lego. It's reading quite nicely. And it works. You can see the colors are all funny and things because it's currently set to uh, NTSC. I might capture card there. If it was PAL, it would have been fine. So let's try something else quickly. Switch it off, close it, put it back. Let's try my backup copy of uh, Final Fantasy, the only backup copy I've got here. Starting up. Still spinning a disc out. There we go. And there it starts. And uh, yeah, colour is still off. But hey, it works. Hmm. What more could you want? And that's all for me, folks. As you can see, it works quite well. There's a lot you can do with it. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And if you like my video please remember to subscribe, rate and comment or even better yet just uh, send a link to your friend and let him join my channel